Hey, welcome to North End Church. We're glad you're with us. We're going to be starting our service in just a couple minutes. So get that cup of coffee, get on the couch, or maybe you're out in the lawn chair right now, and uh, just enjoy this time with the family. We're so excited to be talking to you today about the whole subject that we've called Follow Me. It's Jesus' invitation to you and I to be in a relationship with him. Today we're in part five of hearing the voice of God. How can you be sure that it's God speaking to you and not last night's pizza? Well, speaking of pizza, let's just talk about burgers for a moment. I like to share my COVID moment. And so kind of lately, the one way that Terry and I get out is we go to a few drive-in spots and we order a bit of food. And, uh, you know, there's been MJ Munchies. That's pretty good burger. I got to admit, I think my favorite is still Five Guys, but it's a bit of a drive. But we're going to make that trip as well. I don't know what you do. Love to hear about it. We're collecting some of those videos on those special moments. And, uh, you know, as much as I desperately miss being with all of you, I feel like we're connecting in a whole different way. I just want you to know we're really glad you're part of our live stream today. Stay tuned. We're going to be back in about two minutes. Welcome here to North End Church Online. My name's Chelsea and I'm the Kids Ministry Director here at North End Church and I want to personally welcome you here to North End Church Online. Feel free to say hi in the comment section. That's where our office manager Sarah Meza is saying hi back. We want to welcome you here whether you're in St. Catharines or joining us from across the planet. We welcome you here to a church that we believe that nobody's perfect, anything's possible, and everyone is welcome. on the fun, exciting, and incredible world of kids ministry. <laughs> I wanted to give you a quick update on what we're doing this summer. So we have started the planning process for something. <laughs> we have started the planning process to bring you something exciting this summer. And we have partnered with Scott Street Church to bring you something awesome this summer. What's exciting and awesome? You'll have to wait to find out because I don't want to surprise or I don't want to ruin anything for you and ruin any surprises. But stay tuned for a promotion video for what's happening this summer. As always, we're still having lots and lots of fun with our weekly games, activities, challenges, weekly Zoom calls, and all that fun stuff within our North End Kids Ministry. And we've started and have been going with our Junior High Girls Zoom calls every Saturday evening where we're going through the book, The Lies That Girls Believe. And it's been a really, really fun, exciting adventure with them so far. I hope you guys are having a blast just as I am. Stay tuned for all the fun that's coming to you soon.
Well, we're glad you're with us again today at North End Church. And the subject that we're going to be unpacking is called spiritual engagement. Now, what does it mean to be spiritually engaged? Well, you know what it's like to have a dialogue with someone like right now. I'm looking you in the eyes and you feel like I'm connecting with you. But if I turn this way and I'm kind of talking on my phone and I'm checking my mail and and all those things, say, oh, yeah, I'm really interested in you. It just doesn't work, does it? Hey, I want you to know that God wants you and I to be spiritually engaged. I think many times he has said things to you and me and we've missed it because we're not used to hearing his voice. So put your phone down unless you're watching the service on it that is and uh, crack open your Bible because we're going to be unpacking some scriptures right now. We're going to listen to Jake Jansen who's going to come and read for us and then we're going to have a neat video that helps us to unpack the Romans 12 passage part of the scriptures that are laid out for this week in the follow me material did i tell you how glad we are that you're with us today we're glad you're here i believe that god wants to speak to you the question is are we going to listen let's do that together psalm 32 verse 8 i will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go i will counsel you with my loving eye upon you Acts 13, 2-3 While they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So after they had fasted and prayed, they placed their hands on them and sent them off. Isaiah 30, 21 Whether you turn to the right or to the left, Your ears will hear a voice behind you saying, This is the way, walk in it. The word of the Lord.
inside where justice and mercy embrace there the son of god gave his life for us and our measure You know, part of our worship to God is in how we praise him and how we connect with our heart. And I hope that you connected from your heart to God's heart with that song that we have just enjoyed. But another way that we respond to the Lord is through how we give to him of our time and our talents and our treasure. Sometimes it's easier to give of our treasure than to give of our time. But we're all called to give. We're all called to trust God with what he has given to us to give back to him. Can I say thank you again for your faithfulness in supporting the ministry of North End Church? Through your generosity, we've been able to reach out and to bless many people. We've been able to keep the doors open during COVID. And uh, 
in many ways from our children's ministry to our youth ministry to what's happening with our college students, uh, our many small groups, we are seeing God's hand of blessing at work. Many people are connecting with the church even through these strange times. If you would like to support the ministry of our church, I want to invite you to go to our website, northendchurch.ca, likely you're on it right now. And you can go to a button that's called Donate, and you can click on there. You can do it by e-transfer through Visa, or you know what? You can write a check and mail it into the church or drop it off at the box. Thank you so much for supporting, and thank you for being faithful in giving. This week again, we were uh, so encouraged, <coughs> excuse me, to see so many people blessed through our food bank. And now we're looking at ways to share even more. The Niagara region has put us onto their website as a place to go. And that's how we want the people of God to be known, to be represented. That if the community has a need, they can come to us because we want to care for them with the love of Jesus. One of the powerful ways of reaching out to people is not just through giving tangible gifts, but through the ministry of prayer. And so today, I want to pray with you, and I want to believe with you for God to meet you in your place of need today. I know there are all sorts of needs, those that are related to COVID and those that are not. Some might be a physical need. Maybe you have a financial need. Maybe you're struggling still with what we talked about last week on Black Lives Matter, and you're trying to say, how do I process that? How do I truly be a neighbor to the people around me? So let's pray about those things right now. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you in the name of Jesus that you care for us and that you love us. Thank you that you have told us to come boldly into your throne of grace, to receive grace and mercy to help us in our time of need. And we are asking today, O God, that your mighty power would be poured out upon the North End Church family. We think of many other churches in our area, Lord, and we ask for your blessing on them as well. Thank you that together we are better because of how you are working and moving in our midst. And Lord, I know there are specific needs today. Some people are dealing with cancer. Some have lost loved ones and they're grieving. Father, that they would know your hand of comfort today. And there are others who are perplexed and they're overwhelmed because they have huge decisions. Lord, we desperately need to hear your voice. And I am so grateful that you want to speak to us. So help us to listen today to your word. And we invite your Holy Spirit to come and speak to us even now. For it's in the wonderful, the powerful, the supernatural name of Jesus that we pray and ask these things. Amen and amen. You know, this week, my wife uh, caught me in the kitchen, and she said, you got to look at this. And uh, she had a YouTube video that came up on her phone, and we were looking at it, and we both started laughing. And maybe some of you have seen it. It's uh, two 17-year-olds who are given four minutes to use the old rotary dial telephone to place a call. And I don't know what the reward was, but just the challenge, could they do it? And, And they're looking at it, they're trying to figure it out, and they flunked out, man. They just couldn't do it. And what was so funny about it is that they thought they could leave the old receiver down and they tried to figure out how to dial the numbers, but it just didn't work because you got to be holding the receiver in your hand. And every time they did it, they would just cut out the call anyways, and they couldn't figure it out. You see, when you live with these kind of things all the time, everything's touchstone. You can take it with you. You can travel with you. You can put it on speaker. You talk to it on your Bluetooth. Life has changed and it's hard to keep up with the technology, but it was so funny just to watch it. And as I was thinking about what I saw on that video, 
what was coming into my mind was the challenge that we have in staying engaged. They couldn't engage in a conversation because they didn't know how to use the phone. They didn't know how to use the receiver. And many times that's what happens in our spiritual journey. We just think, oh man, I just want to talk to God and, and it's all going to work. And, but we don't know how to listen. I remember using those phones and remember watching some people in our house, my siblings use the phones. And there'd be times, you know, a neighbor or someone would call and they were just kind of known as the, the yak, 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 yak. And they would just talk and talk and talk and you couldn't get a word in edgewise. Matter of fact, if you knew that so-and-so was calling, you just kind of, ugh. The air went out of your uh, balloon because you thought, I'll never get on the phone. And there were times I've been guilty as others. We would take the receiver and just turn it up and lay it on the table and walk away. And you'd come back 10 minutes later and they'd still be talking. Well, today we can just take our phone with us and we can pretend that we're listening. But at the end of the day, are you engaging in dialogue? And we got a statement that comes up on the screen today, and it says this, to speak of having a relationship with God, as we often do, is empty without engaging in two-way conversation. And people, I want you to realize something that's so simple, and yet it is so profound. God wants us to hear from him. He wants to be in relationship with us, but he also know, wants us to know two things. He wants us to be able to have assurance that we can share our requests with him. But he also wants you to know that he wants us to hear his heart. To hear his heart. The psalmist wrote in Psalm 37 verse 4, Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. One of the scriptures that we heard already today teaches us a principle about this engagement that God wants us to have with him. And the principle is this, that God wants to give you and me, he wants to give us direction. Now, isn't that encouraging? Maybe you're pausing and you're saying, well, you know, I would like direction, but I don't seem to get it. And I'm always making bad decisions. I'm making, you know, I'm going down a path and realize, oh man, I really messed up. Why is that? Why did that happen? We're going to teach some of those things today, and I want to encourage you to use the Follow Me material. You know, you can access it from our website right now. You just go to the Connect button and go down to Life Groups, and you'll see the material is there. And you can download it, and this study will be life-changing for you. Today, I'm just giving you some of the highlights of that study. But you know, God wants to give you direction. So here it is, Psalm 32, verse 8. It's a key verse that it would be a great one for you to memorize. The Lord says, the Lord says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. What an incredible, incredible truth. God desires, it tells us, to teach us and to instruct us in the way to go. Isn't that fantastic? Many times, though, we think we know better than God. We don't want to come out and say it, but really in our heart of hearts, that's our pride. And we know that phrase, it's found in the book of Proverbs, it says that pride goes before a fall. Now why does God teach that? Because he wants us to be in complete dependence upon him. He wants to be to lead us and guide us. You know, another verse in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12, it says this, There is a way that seems right unto a man or a woman, but the end thereof leads to death. Matter of fact, that verse is in Proverbs 14, it's also stated again in Proverbs 16. What is it that God is trying to remind us of? He's trying to remind us that if we are always trying to do things our own way, we're not going to be listening for him. We might say, yeah, God, I want you to bless what I'm doing. But if I don't enter into his presence, if I don't take time to, to read and pray and to be still and to listen for his voice, I'm going to miss out. Now, you see, Solomon would write these words in Proverbs chapter 3. He would say, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding in all your ways. There's that little word again. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Maybe Solomon, who was the son of David, was thinking about his own father who had written 
uh, Psalm 32. He says, God will instruct us and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my eye upon you. Just think about that. God wants to instruct you in the way that you should go today and this week. I believe in the way that, you know, you're going to deal with your family situation today. Or maybe it's tomorrow as you go to work. Maybe it's in how you decide how you're going to handle in the midst of this COVID pandemic, what you're going to do or what you're not going to do. God says, I want to guide you. I say, how do you know that? Does God really care about those little things? I thought it was just the big things. Well, what we find is in the next phrase, I will counsel you with my eye upon you. The idea of the eye upon us speaks of the closeness that God wants in our relationship with him. So if we're talking about being spiritually engaged and hearing his voice, God says, I want to counsel you with my eye. Now, I don't know how else to explain this except to refer to marriage. And the longer I live with my wife, I know that she can speak a lot to me just by looking to me. And there are times, as guys, we make jokes about it. Yeah, I got the look. I got the eye. And you know when you're in trouble, refer to it as the evil eye. But when you're in favor, you get the twinkling eye. Say, whoa, that's good. You know, everything's, you know, just chiming along really well. But there have been many times I've been in a conversation, I'm embarrassed to admit this, but I know that every other guy understands this. Okay, so I'm just going to talk to the men for 30 seconds here. And you've been in a situation, you think you're being funny, you're saying something, and all of a sudden you look over, and there in that room is your wife, and she gives you the look. You know, the look. You get the eye, and I know exactly what she's thinking. I'm thinking, oh my goodness, I'm going to hear about this when I get home, or vice versa. That's the the beauty of this passage. God says in the relationship, he just wants to be able to look at us. I'll counsel you with my eye. This is to be a positive situation, a life-giving situation that breathes life into the situation that you are in right now. God says, I want to guide you with my eye. Now, if God wants to give us direction, then it stands to reason that we need to prepare our hearts to hear His voice. What do you mean? Prepare your heart. Well, I believe that if I want to hear God's voice, I need to make sure that I'm ready to hear his voice. You know, if guests are coming over to your home, you're going to want to prepare for them to come. You want to get the table set. You want to get the place cleaned up and do all those good things. And if you're cooking the meal, and guys, if we pretend we're cooking the meal, what it basically means is we're just turning on the barbecue. And our dear wife or uh, helpmate, she has done all the other work. So I'm not going to take credit there. But the picture is I need to be prepared. We need to be prepared. How do I prepare my heart to hear from the Lord? Well, the example found is in Acts chapter 13, verses 2 to 3. And here we see a church that prepared themselves to hear God's voice. And there are principles here for corporately, as a church, what we need to be doing, but also for us privately in our own lives as we seek to hear God's voice. Let's read verses 2 and 3 of Acts 13. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which... I have called them. Who was it that they were being called to do? Well, it says that they were being called to go out into ministry. But before they were going to go out into ministry, what had to happen is they needed to hear clearly from the Lord. How did they prepare themselves? It says they worshiped and they fasted. Let's unpack those two words for a moment. You see, when they worship, that's the idea of ministering to the Lord. It was really a word that was descriptive of the priest in the Old Testament, how that they would minister unto the Lord. And we now are priests unto the Lord, the Bible says, because his spirit dwells within us. So if I'm a priest before God, and so are you if you're a child of God, we are called to worship him, to minister to him. And in Romans 12, the verse that we saw in that video, in verse 1, it says, I'm to offer myself as a living sacrifice unto the Lord, which is my spiritual act of worship. I'm to be a living sacrifice. That's how I minister to the Lord. What does that exactly mean? I believe it talks about 
you know, worship is a, a, a grand word. It covers a lot of territory. It can speak of me giving exuberant praise to God and singing praises to him as we do when we gather together. But you can also do that on your own. It speaks of the times that I spend in prayer. It speaks of how I give of my resources and my times, which we've already referred to earlier on when we were praying about the offering and the needs in the church family. But worshiping God also is about listening and hearing his voice and listening and responding to what God is saying. So it says the early church, they worshiped and then they fasted. Now, what does fasting do? Well, fasting helps us hear the Father's heart. On different occasions, I've touched on this subject, I've preached on it, and I have learned over the last 15 years or so that it needs to be part of my spiritual discipline. If I am really seeking God's voice, I want to fast. So what is fasting all about? Well, in a nutshell, fasting is when I say no to things that my flesh would like, not necessarily things that are wrong, but I just say for a period of time, I'm going to say no to those things so that I can better hear the voice of God. And one of those things, and predominantly the thing that I fast from, will be food. And, and that's really hard because I've got this muscle right here and it says, feed me, feed me. And, and every time I walk by the fridge and especially at night, between 9.30 and 11 o'clock at night, I'd be embarrassed to admit how many times I open the door and I just look in and see what's there. Maybe I should just nibble on this or nibble on that, have a little bit of junk food, uh, have some peanuts, you know, have a few chips and, and all those things that I'm sure are so good for me. And it just says, feed me. But you know, when I'm fasting, I'm saying, I'm going to say no to those things. And why do I say no? So that I can take that time. And when that muscle says, feed me, you know, take care of me, I can pause and say, no, I'm, I'm going to control that. I want to be listening for God's voice. And in that moment, I find that it jogs me to be praying about something or the things that I'm bringing before God as I'm fasting and praying, I'm reminded of them. I say, Lord, I just want to bring this need to you again. I am praying for a breakthrough. Now, let me also explain the other side. What is fasting? What it isn't. Fasting is not manipulating God. It's not thinking that if I do, you know, one, two, and three, that I'm going to get four or five. You know, that's not what it is. I'm not putting God in a box. I'm not trying to say, God, if I do all these things that I'm expecting you to act that way. That's not what it is. But what it is, is getting my heart, my will, and my desires enmeshed with God. You see, when we fast, we're able to listen to God's voice. There is a part in the spiritual that I can't explain, but I know that it's real. Fasting unlocks spiritual power. And as you take time to fast and pray over difficult situations, I'm going to tell you, you will hear God's voice. It might be a simple word. It might be something in scripture that jumps out, but you're going to hear God's voice. Now, we take those thoughts and we read that the whole church was worshiping and fasting. And guess what? God spoke. He says, set apart Paul and Barnabas for the work that I've called them to do. They listened to this. And then they commissioned them and they sent them out. And it was amazing what happened because the gospel then spread throughout Asia Minor and even into Europe. It was significant what happened when the church fasted and prayed. So we come back and now we can say, okay, how do I take all these truths and how do I know if God is speaking to me or not? What about the day-to-day -day things? Maybe you're not going off on a missionary trip or something like that, but you're saying, God, you know, what about today? What about this decision I have to make? What are you saying? Let's, let's outline at least five things today. And I'm just going to share them quickly with you, and then you can unpack them more in your study. But the first thing that is important, if I'm going to receive and obey God's guidance, and remember this, we read it in Psalm 32, the Lord wants to instruct and teach us in the way we should go. So God wants to do that. So if God wants to do it, it stands to reason that I should expect to hear from him. 
Isn't that amazing? It's so simple, so true. But nobody taught me that for over 40 years, that I should expect to hear from God. But if I want to hear from God, I need to be prepared, first of all, to submit to his will. If God's going to tell me something, I say, Lord, will you reveal things to me? I need to be prepared to submit. And that's the second part of the passage in Romans 12. It says, don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that by testing, you may discern what is the will of God. What is good and acceptable and perfect? Did you hear that? Did you see that as you were reading it with me? God wants you to be able to discern what is the will of God. It's not to be a mystery. God's will for your life, he wants you to be able to discern it. But when you hear it, he's expecting you to obey it. Don't ask for more insight or revelation from God if you're not willing to obey what he's already told you to do. And then, I think the other thing is so important, and Ray Dirksen teaches this is in the uh, Follow Me material, is that I need to receive a personalized word regarding my situation. You're saying, is that possible? Is God going to speak to me in a personal way? Well, if you're a follower of Jesus, he has. You responded to his nudge in your heart to call out to him to be your Savior and Lord. So if God wants to be your Savior and Lord, he's not going to leave you high and dry. He wants you to walk with him day by day. Think of Samuel in the Old Testament. He said, Lord, speak because your servant is listening. It said the first time he heard God's voice, he wasn't used to it. Or the second time. And then Eli, the high priest, said, God's speaking to you to get your attention. What, Lord, is it that you're saying to me? Now look at the scripture. In Acts chapter 16, we see how the apostles were saying, Lord, should we go and do this ministry or not? I'm just going to read it and make a few comments. But in Acts 16, verse 6, we read, Having been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. So that's the first thought. The Holy Spirit forbade them. said, you know, I don't want you to go to Asia. They attempted then to go to another place called Bithynia. But the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them to go there either. They were listening and God said, I don't want you to go there. But then in a vision... It appeared to Paul in the night, a man of Macedonia was standing there, urging him and saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. And when Paul had seen the vision, immediately he said, we sought to go into Macedonia, concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. Just think about that for a moment. So they wanted to go, first of all, to Asia, and God said no. So sometimes what we want and what God wants are going to be different. But they were okay to submit that. And then he said, well, Lord, maybe you want us to go to Bithynia. But the Holy Spirit said, I don't want you to go there either. And then Paul gets this vision of a man from Macedonia. Where did that come from? And here he's asleep and he gets this vision and he says, come and help us. And they determined that was God speaking to them. And they went and blessing followed. Wow, what an important insight. And you notice what happened? They completed the first point that I mentioned. They submitted to God's will because they were called to go. And then they said, immediately we went and did it. So you see, that's a whole other part too, because when God speaks, we need to respond immediately. Now, when God gives us a word and something jumps out to us from scripture, or maybe you have an impression in your heart or this kind of vision, how do I know if it's true? And I grew up with skeptics. They would say, you can't trust any of those things only if it's written in the Bible. And I'm thankful that, you know, so much is given to us what we need in the Bible. But there are scriptural guidelines to determine if what I'm sensing in my heart is really of God. And this gets exciting because here's the first thing. I need to consider if this word from God, and we talked about a Rima word, it's when the scriptures become personal and it's like saying, oh, that's for me. That verse is for me. Matter of fact, just before I preached this message, I was reading another passage and I said, I think that's a verse that somebody else needs. And I texted it to them and they said, oh, that meant so much because it spoke into their situation. That's a Rima word. But here's the first thing. If what I sense God is calling me to do, first and foremost, it can't violate any scriptural principle. 
Many times I've seen people in relationships and they said, oh yeah, God wants me to be in this relationship, but the person doesn't love Jesus. But they say, you know what? I'm going to make it work out and, and it's all going to be fine. No, you're violating scripture. Or they're involved in a business deal and it's just slightly shady. No, God is a God of justice and righteousness. He's not giving you a word of blessing to go ahead and do that. Here's the first thing. We need to apply the Joseph principle. The Joseph principle is in Genesis 39. Now his life is on the line. And you remember the story, Potiphar's wife comes and she wants to seduce him and says, you know, I want you to sleep with me. He says, I can't do this. And the principle is, how can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? So he chooses to make a decision, even though his life is on the line, he says no to this woman and he gets tossed into prison. How did he make that decision? Even though the situation would have been so appealing and he could have lived in the, the luxury and the lap of a sinful relationship. Instead, he goes to prison. because He says, I can't do this great wickedness and sin against God. That's the first thing. That's the uh, Joseph principle. But there's the Gideon principle. Do you remember he's being called to fight the, um, the Midianite army? And first of all, he says, God, would you give me a sign? He says, I'm going to put a fleece out. And he said, if the fleece is wet in the morning and the ground is dry, I'll know that's from you. And then the next day, he goes vice versa. What happened the first night? It said he wrung out a full bowl full of water. You can read the story in Judges chapter 6. And uh, the next day, it's the reverse. The ground was all wet and the fleece was dry. So God spoke because he wanted confirmation. And when you are sensing, God, is this your word? It's okay to ask God for confirmation. Say, Lord, will you confirm it as I'm reading your scripture? Maybe you have a friend who's praying into this, who's being unbiased toward your situation, but will listen on your behalf and say, I'm not sure that's the right thing as much as you want it. Or maybe they'll say, yes, uh, you know what? It just seems to be tailor-made for you. And we need to ask for confirmation in your meditation of scripture. You see, back to Proverbs 12, verse 15. It says, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man listens to advice. Isn't that great? The way that I'm always thinking is always absolutely right. But that's, that's the way of a fool. But a wise man listens to advice. And the advice needs to be, first of all, does it line up with scripture? And this nudge in my heart, the way I make sure that it's not last night's pizza or indigestion is by just pausing and saying, God, will you just confirm that in my heart? It might take a little bit of time. I might need to wait. But here we're going to unpack the last few things. I need to ask God to reveal the process. Do you remember the story with Gideon? Now, here it is. The how is as important as the what. Hey, what are you talking about? Well, how God speaks and how he wants me to do something is important as to what he wants me to do. So God made clear to Gideon that he was to go and to fight the, um, the Midianites. But Gideon says, well, how am I supposed to do that? And God makes it clear. So the Midianites had 135,000 men, and Gideon, you know, gathers together his little band of fighters, and he gets up to uh, about 35,000. Not really a good match. So actually, it was 32,000. So then God says, Gideon, here's how I want you to do it. And sometimes how God wants us to do it just doesn't make sense. But that's okay. We need to be listening. And he said, I want you to tell the people that are fearful to go home. So guess what? 22,000 left, and suddenly there's only 10,000 against 135,000. Hello? Is God's how the right way? And then God says, guess what, Gideon? Still too many people. Now, when he had 32,000, the odds were about one to four. Not good odds, even if you're in Vegas. But now God says, tell them all to go. And then the 10,000, tell them to go down to the water and drink, have a drink. And he says, whoever scoops the water up like this and drinks it out of their hand while they're looking around, those are the ones. There's only 300 that do it that way. And God says, those are the 300 you're to take. Hello? 300 to take on a whole army? That just doesn't make a lot of sense, God. But God says, my ways are not your ways. And God took Gideon, and he, the how was to do something even more amazing. If you read the story, they take a torch, 
They put a clay pot over top of it and a trumpet. Can you imagine that? You're sound asleep. You're the army of Midian, 135,000, and 300 guys blow their trumpet. I'd just about be jumping out of my skin. And I'm running out of the tent, and they're cracking the clay pots open, and all of a sudden, these torches are lighting up the night. And it says, God routed the whole army. Because God's ways are not always our ways. But it's so exciting when we're listening for his voice. And here's the last thing. I need to ask God to reveal the process. I need to wait and then obey. Patience is so important. It talks about the birth of Jesus in Galatians 4 as happening in the fullness of time. And it's a picture of the fullness of time. It's like this glass of water. And you can fill the glass right up to the top, but then you can always put a couple drops in. And those drops speak of the fullness of time, God's perfect timing. I want you to know this, that as you wait for God and say, Lord, in your timing, it says he'll renew your strength. You mount up with wings like eagles. You run and not be weary and you will walk and not faint. In Isaiah 30, verse 21, it says, your ears will hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. More than anything else, let God guide you this week. Take time to listen for his voice. Don't be in a rush. Even if you have to wait three or four days, three or four weeks, three or four months, or three or four years, God's timing is always perfect. He wants to place his hand on your shoulder right now, and he wants to guide you in the way that you should go. Let's pray. Father, we ask today that you would take your word and let it come alive in our hearts for your name's sake. We want to thank you that you still speak to us today. I want to thank you that even though it might feel like this is whole new territory for us, that you're inviting us on a journey with you where we hear your voice and we discover you in such a fresh and amazing way. So Lord, speak truth to our hearts today for your honor and for your glory. Amen. Just before we go and enjoy another song, let me tell you a story. Probably shouldn't tell it to you, but they're the best ones anyways, right? I remember back in college, I had a room, not a roommate, but he was on our floor. His name was Harvey. Harvey was blind, and, uh, but he was an amazing young man. Uh, he, was a, he tuned pianos of all things. I, I would watch him run up and down the stairs faster than I would even dare to do it. One day, he was out in my old Polaris 500. It was a big old Dodge boat. And we were, uh, it had a bench seat, and we were driving someplace. And as only a teenage guy would say, I was probably 18 at that time, I said, Harvey, do you want to steer the car? <laughs> now, Harvey is just, he's totally blind. He said, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And so he slid over, and I was running the pedals, and he grabbed the steering wheel. I said, a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right. Hold it steady, Harvey. And there were a couple times when I would reach out and straighten it out. We had a great time together. Probably shouldn't share that, but I think it's a great way for us to understand how God wants to be invited to take over the steering wheel of our life. He wants to guide you. He wants to instruct you. You'll hear him say a little to the left, a little to the right. Keep going straight. And in the midst of that, we're going to have the joy of being with the one who is the creator of the universe, our God and Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the road trip of a lifetime. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my soul This cornerstone, this solid ground Firm through the fiercest drought and storm What heights of love, what depths of peace When fears are still and striving cease My comforter, my all adore
Thank you. 